In their simplest form, the drill stem test tools run on either drill pipe or tubing, consist of flow control valves, a fluid sample chamber, an inside pressure recorder, one or more packers to isolate the zone being tested, a perforated anchor for fluid to enter the tool string, a temperature recorder, and a pressure recorder. As the tools are run into the hull, the increasing hydrostatic pressure of the mud column is recorded by the pressure gauge. The tools are run into the hole with an empty drill pipe or tubing, except in those cases where a carefully designed water, diesel, or nitrogen cushion is required. When the tools reach the depth of the formation to be tested, the packer is set against the walls of the hole or casing, thereby isolating the pressure of the mud column from the pressure in the test zone. Pressure is measured at the very bottom of the tool string, and also within the tool string itself, and so the gauge now will record the pressure imposed by the hydrostatic head and any squeeze pressure developed when setting the packer. A flow valve is then opened and the formation fluids are free to flow into the low pressure drill pipe. As fluids fill the drill pipe, the pressure increases. This is the initial flow or pre-flow period and is usually of short duration, typically five to 10 minutes. Its purpose is to relieve any buildup in pressure that may have occurred in setting the packer or packers, or any supercharging of the reservoir due to mud filtrate invasion. A control valve is then closed. And because fluids can no longer flow into the drill pipe, the pressure recorders begin to feel the formation pressure and the recorded pressure normally approaches the original formation pressure. This is the initial shut-in pressure. This shut-in period typically lasts for 30 to 60 minutes. The control valve is then opened once again for the second more important flow period. The test will last for 60 to 180 minutes for an open hole test and up to 8 to 10 hours for a cased hole test. At the end of this second and final flow period, a fluid sample is collected and isolated in the sample chamber. Samples are also collected at the surface for wells that flow to the surface. This final flow period is followed by a final shut-in period, which should last for about twice as long as the final flow period. This gives a value for the final shut-in pressure. Any produced hydrocarbons are then reverse circulated out of the test string. The packer is carefully released and the tool pulled to the surface. Note that the hydrostatic pressure imposed by the mud column at the bottom of the drill stem as soon as the packer is released is reduced as the tool string is pulled out of the hole. At the surface, the pressure recording device is retrieved from the tool string and the dynamic response of the test interval to the alternating pressure drawdown and buildup periods is analyzed. Of course, if the required information was not obtained, the test must be repeated. To avoid this costly remedy, it is now possible to measure pressures at the surface while the test is being run. This provides immediate information on the quality of the test, an opportunity to analyze the data before the tool is retrieved, and the ability to terminate the test when sufficient data has been collected.